गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल वेलकम बैक टू द सेशन वी आर डिस्कसिंग स्टेंटा मटेरियल कोर्स लेक्चर 2 नाउ वी नीड टू डिस्कस स्ट्रेस वर्सेस स्ट्रेन डायग्राम्स इन स्टेंटा मटेरियल कोर्स फर्स्ट फोकस ऑन स्ट्रेस वर्सेस स्ट्रेन डायग्राम फॉर माइल्ड स्टील ट्रू स्ट्रेस वर्सेस ट्रू स्ट्रेन डायग्राम फॉर माइल्ड स्टील अंडर यूनि एक्सियल टेंसाइल लोडिंग एंड द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन Engineering stress in and engineering strain, true stress and true strain. What are the relationship between engineering and true values? Next, stress versus strain diagram for mild steel, cast iron, aluminium. Next, why steel is more elastic than rubber? It is one of the popularly asked question in the interview. Okay. Finally, here stress versus strain diagram for different materials. Uh, everything is important for mechanical engineering student. First, write down up to here. Then we can start from stress versus strain diagram for mild steel. And uh, uni axial tensile loading condition that is tensile test. Here it is what tensile test. We have done in first year B Tech Stenta Materials Lab. And now stress. Versus strain diagram for mild steel which is subjected under which is subjected under uni axial tensile loading condition loading condition here that is tensile test uni axial tensile loading case tensile test here yeah. tensile test is nothing but this is the specimen okay generally in utm na apply apply tensile load here tensile load p this particular thing is tensile load Length of the specimen is L not L not. After after elongation, this particular thing will be. L final. So after the fracture, na Fracture will occur somewhere. Again, this is forty-five degrees. Cup and cone fracture. For 
mild steel it is a tactile material Forty five, then forty five degrees. Cup and cone fracture. Okay. Now we need to focus on stress versus strain diagram. First, draw stress versus strain diagram. Stress taken on y axis, strain taken on x axis. From here to here, it will come like this, and yielding will occur. Yielding will occur. Then this is the stress versus strain diagram. Now, from here to here, it will be proportionality limit. Then. Proportionality limit. Elastic limit. Yield point. This will be lower yield point. Here Y one. Okay. So yielding zone. Ultimate point. Breaking. Point. Okay. So from here to here, it will be. This is elastic region. Next, from here to here, elastic. Plastic region. This is plastic region. Okay. Next. From here to here, strain hardening. Strain hardening. From here to here, strain softening. This particular thing is. Yielding zone. Okay, so we can discuss later. Now, this is upper yield point, lower yield point. Okay, so here P is nothing but what is meant by P? Proportionality limit. Proportionality limit. E for elastic limit. Y for yield point. Yield point. The corresponding stress will be yield strength. Here you will get yield strength under tension. Yield strength under tension. The corresponding stress will be. This is sigma. Here you will get sigma u t. Okay, ultimate point. U is ultimate point. Next, y two. U strain hardening zone strain 
हार्डनिंग जो नेक्स्ट यू इज नथिंग बट यू इज अल्टीमेट पॉइंट अल्टीमेट पॉइंट नेक्स्ट यू बी स्ट्रेन softening zone after that you be b is the breaking point b is the breaking point proportionality limit elastic limit yield point ultimate point and breaking point strain hardening will takes place and strain softening will occur this is elastic region elastoplastic region and plastic region here for mild steel under uni axial tensile loading cup and cone fracture will occur okay cup and cone fracture why because the Uh, mild steel is a ductile material okay ductile materials are weak in shear fracture will occur along the tau max planes okay na so these two are tau max planes we can discuss that part in more circle chapter okay now you don't know the definition of maximum shear stress plane okay so how to explain this cup and cone fracture for ductile material under uni axial tensile loading you should know the definitions of all planes and you should know how to apply more circle that part you can cover in the more circle chapter okay so as a experimental results you will get cup and cone fracture for ductile materials under uni axial tensile loading this is here we are doing experiment on mild steel write down up to here डोर को नाउ कंप्लीट है ना नाउ वी नीड टू डिफाइन proportionality limit elastic limit what is meant by yield strength and what is meant by ultimate strength and breaking point strain hardening and strain softening we can discuss what is meant by strain hardening and strain softening creep everything in material science course okay so that is very important course we uh, we need to discuss what is meant by strain hardening what are the strain hardening effect so it is a big chapter we can discuss that part in material science course for time being we need to focus on the what is meant by proportionality limit elastic limit yield point ultimate point and breaking point put heading proportionality limit proportionality limit p it is the limit up to which the material obeys hooke's law
Uxla is valid up to proportionality limit. What is meant by Uxla? Stress is directly proportional to strain. Sigma equivalence to E into epsilon. E into epsilon. Here, E equivalence to sigma by epsilon. Epsilon equal to delta L by L. Okay. Sigma equal to P by A for uniaxial tensile loading. This is point, uh, this particular thing is P. This is L, you can say. You can take delta L by L. This is L. Now, E equivalence to P by A by delta L by L. Then you will get stress versus strain diagram for mild steel, which is subjected under uniaxial tensile loading. It is nothing but tensile test. First, draw stress versus strain diagram for the mild steel. Here, P means proportionality limit, E for elastic limit, Y for yield point, and it is yielding zone, strain hardening zone. U is nothing but ultimate point, B is breaking point. From here to here, elastic region, elastoplastic region, and plastic region. Now we are discussing proportionality limit. What is meant by proportionality limit? It is the limit up to which the material obeys Hooke's law. What is meant by Hooke's law? Stress is directly proportional to the strain. Remove proportionality and replace with the proportionality constant that is Young's modulus. Young's modulus equal to stress by strain. Longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. From here, we can derive a beautiful expression for axial deformation when a component subject under uniaxial tensile loading. Now, write down up to here. Take a pic. Okay. Now, next elastic limit. Put it in elastic limit. It is the limit it is the limit the material up to which up to which the material behaves as perfect elastic. What is meant by elasticity property? Elasticity. It is a property of the material. Material. It is a property of material. The ability of the material ability of the material the ability of regain back regain back to its original position after removal of the load Okay, now, 
it is a property of regain back to its original position after removal of the load okay so that is called elasticity perfect elastic means the material will regain back to its original position after removal of the load strength of material course means theory of elasticity we need to discuss all strength of material calculations in elastic region okay it is a concept of theory of elasticity elasticity means the material will regain back to its original position after removal of the load here this is called elastic limit write down up here the ability of the material to regain back to its original position next yield point or yield strength okay next slide on right on yield strength under tension yield strength under tension it is the maximum stress up to which up to which maximum stress up to which material withstand the loads without undergoing plastic deformation okay material up to here material which is stand the loads without undergoing plastic deformation after reaching yield strength the material will be in the plastic region it is the maximum stress up to which material can withstand the loads without undergoing plastic deformation that is called yield strength under tension we are talking about yield strength under tension only next ultimate point or ultimate stress ultimate strength or ultimate stress sigma ut here it is the maximum stress maximum stress recorded in tensile test tensile test or it is the maximum stress obtained in the tensile test recorded or obtained obtained in the tensile test it is ultimate stress okay next here breaking point this is the breaking stress it is the maximum stress it is the maximum stress up to which the material withstand the loads without occurring failure without occurring any failure okay 
Breaking stress is nothing but it is the maximum stress up to which the material withstand the loads without occurring any failure. Once you give a load or once more the a load is given maximum uh, after this particular point failure of the component will takes place okay once it reaches breaking point okay na? so the failure of the component will occur beyond this point failure will takes place what is meant by failure of the component cracks will be formed in that then uh, it will be broken okay so component will be broken after this particular point that is called failure of the component okay yield strength ultimate strength and breaking stress now put it in elastic region right down up to here Elastic region, elastoplastic region, and plastic region. Put it in elastic region. It is the region in which it is the region in which the material regain back to its original position. Position after removal of the load black feature black feature okay so plastic region it is the region in which the material can't regain back to its original position position after removal of the load Next, elastoplastic region. It is the region in which in which the material regain back but not to original position okay it will come you need to draw one parallel line this is nothing but 0.2 percent of epsilon okay so elastic region it is the region in which the material regain back to its original position that is the property of elasticity what is the property of plasticity it is the region or it is the property of the material the material can't regain back to its original position 
after removal of the load next elastoplastic region here elastic region material can regain back material can regain back to its original position to its original position here material material can't regain back material can regain back to its original position material can't regain back to its original position come to elastoplastic region material can regain back but not to original position material can regain back but not to original position that is elastoplastic region now we discussed elastic region plastic region and elastoplastic region so here proportionality limit elastic limit yield strength yielding zone strain hardening zone strain softening zone yield strength under tension ultimate strength under tension what is meant by proportionality limit elastic limit yield strength ultimate strength and breaking stress okay so elastic region plastic region and finally elastoplastic region okay na under tensile loading case mild steel okay na here what kind of fracture will occur for mild steel under uniaxial tensile loading is cup and cone fracture why because ductile materials are weak in shear fracture will occur along the maximum shear stress plane that is why you will get cup and cone fracture for ductile material under uniaxial tensile loading that is tensile test right on priya Now, updating. Yeah, updating. True stress versus true strain. Diagram for mild steel. Okay. True stress versus true strain diagram for mild steel. Focus on this. What is the difference between true stress and engineering stress? Here I can take stress. It may be true stress or engineering stress. It is a strain. First draw. Fine. Engineering stress versus engineering strain diagram. Take okay. it. Here it is. This particular thing is sigma versus epsilon. Now we need to draw true stress versus true strain diagram. Both the diagrams will be coincide up to here. Okay. This is what. This is true stress versus true strain diagram.
true stress versus true strain diagram here it is proportionality limit elastic limit yield point okay here hooks law is valid hooks law sigma is directly proportional to epsilon sigma is equal to e into epsilon which law is valid in plastic region which law we need to take okay na plastic region power law we need to focus on the power law sigma t is equal to k into epsilon t whole power n this is called power law okay so this is the difference between uh, engineering stress engineering strain true stress and true strain now we need to write down the definition of the true stress what is meant by true stress true stress it is nothing but sigma t yeah true stress is equal to sigma t equal to internal resistance by resistance by instantaneous area of cross section instantaneous area of cross section this is called true stress okay what is meant by engineering stress tell me engineering stress this is engineering stress internal resistance by stands by original area of cross section original area of cross section this is true stress and engineering stress now true strain true strain Here epsilon t equal to change in dimensions by dimensions by instantaneous instantaneous dimension. It is nothing but delta l by l. engineering strain is nothing but change in dimensions by original dimension here l final minus l initial by l original okay here what is meant by true stress what is meant by true value true value is nothing but internal resistance offered by the body per unit instantaneous area of cross section what is the area of cross section at that particular instant of time that will give true stress so engineering values na all engineering values calculated with reference to the original dimensions okay to calculate engineering stress internal resistance offered by the original area of cross section similarly true strain is nothing but change in dimensions by the dimension at the particular instant of time to calculate longitudinal strain here it is what strain uh, load acting along the length direction 
true uh, true strain we are trying to calculate change in dimensions by length la uh, change in length by length at that particular instant of time okay that is nothing but true value that is the true strain. so we need to take instantaneous dimensions to get the true value so now engineering value engineering strain change in dimensions by original dimension this is the difference between true values and engineering values but once you observe both the graphs this is engineering stress versus engineering strain diagram true stress versus true strain diagram both the diagrams will coincide within the elastic region that means sigma t versus epsilon t diagram and sigma versus epsilon diagram both are exactly same within the elastic region okay na well coincide in elastic region elastic region due to less deformation due to small deformations deform Mentions here it is what this particular thing sigma t versus epsilon t. Okay, here sigma t versus epsilon t diagram, sigma versus epsilon diagram, both will coincide in the elastic region. All strength of material calculations are done in elastic region. That is why. Engine are uh, true values and engineering values exactly same. No need to calculate true stress and true strain for strength of material calculations. Why? Because both diagrams will coincide in the elastic region. Okay, but uh, metal forming calculations are done in. plastic region for metal forming calculations we need to calculate sigma t and epsilon t okay so for metal forming we need to use power law power law is used in the plastic region this is for plastic region hooks law is used in the elastic region that is why you are following engineering stress engineering strain in throughout the strength of material course okay here engineering stress and engineering strain values are true values both will coincide but here it is not like that here engineering stress and engineering strain are not true values it is deviating in plastic region that is why we need to focus on the true stress and true strain in metal forming calculations the definition of true stress engineering stress true strain engineering strain are given okay na so that is the difference between true values and engineering values write down up to ya yeah. కొన్ ఏమి ఎవర్ లేరా ఒక్కరు కూడా సార్ ఉన్నాను సార్ ఎబెక్స్ లోనే సార్ ఓ సూపర్ ఆ ఉంచు ఉంచు జాయిన్ అయితరే మధ్యలో నీ సో ఆఫ్ చేసి ఆ ఛార్జింగ్ పెట్టేసి ఓకే ఎవర ఎవర సీను రిలేషన్షిప్ బిట్వీన్ ట్రూ వాల్యూస్ అండ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ వాల్యూస్ ఫస్ట్ ఫోకస్ ఆన్ ద 
इंजीनियरिंग स्ट्रेन इंजीनियरिंग स्ट्रेन एक्सीलॉन इक्वल टू एल फाइनल माइनस एल ओरिजिनल बाय एल ओरिजिनल यार एल फाइनल बाय एल ओरिजिनल माइनस वन एल फाइनल बाय एल ओरिजिनल इज इक्वल टू वन प्लस एक्सीलॉन नाउ ट्रू स्ट्रेन ट्रू स्ट्रेन इज नथिंग बट डी एल बाय एल इंटीग्रल ऑफ एल ओरिजिनल टू एल फाइनल इट इज नथिंग बट एल एन एल एल ओरिजिनल टू एल फाइनल फाइनल एल एन एल फाइनल बाय एल ओरिजिनल एल एन वन प्लस एप्सिलॉन एप्सिलॉन टी इज इक्वल टू एल एन वन प्लस एप्सिलॉन दिस इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन इन ट्रू स्ट्रेन एंड इंजीनियरिंग स्ट्रेन नाउ ट्रू स्ट्रेस सिग्मा टी मैडम सिग्मा टी इक्वल टू इंटरनल रेसिस्टेंस इज नथिंग बट टेन्स लोड बाय इंस्टेंटेनियस एरिया ऑफ क्रॉस सेक्शन now we need to multiply a not by a not so from here to here it will be sigma sigma into a not by a okay for plastic region na volume is constant in plastic region plastic region that means al is equal to constant so here this is nothing but a not l not is equal to a into l here a not by a is nothing but a not by a is nothing but l by l not l by l not it may be It is looking like uh, L final by L not. Na nah, L is the instantaneous length. Okay, so can I write uh, L by L not uh, equivalence to one plus epsilon? Okay, so here sigma into L by L not. Finally, you can write sigma into one plus epsilon here. True stress equivalence to sigma into one plus epsilon. This is the relationship between true stress and engineering stress. It is very simple. Start with engineering strain. You will get this particular relation. Next, true strain is nothing but change in dimensions by instantaneous dimension. To calculate the strain, we need to integrate from L not to L final. Just apply the limits. Finally, we will get L n L final by L not. L n here L final by L not is nothing but one plus. Epsilon. Okay. So true stress is nothing but P by the internal resistance by instantaneous area of cross section. We need to multiply and divide with original area of cross section. P by A not is nothing but engineering stress. A not by A. So take volume equal to constant for plastic region. A L equal to constant. Finally, you got A not by A is nothing but L by L not. You can write L by L not as one plus epsilon. These two relations are very very important. The relationship between sigma t. You can write down the title. Here it is what the relation, the relationship between sigma t epsilon t and sigma epsilon. So this is very very important. Okay. Right now up to here.
नेक्स्ट राइट ठीक है प्लास्टिक प्लास्टिक टेंसा लोडिंग या प्लास्टिक कंप्रेसिव लोडिंग एल वर्जिनल इक्वल टू एल एल फाइनल इज इक्वल टू टू एल हियर इनिशियल इज एल एल फाइनल इज इक्वल टू एल बाई टू एल बाई टू दोटल टेन्सर लोडिंग अक्र इन द प्लास्टिक रीजियन प्लास्टिक रीजियन ना सी दिलॉन इज नथिंग बट L final minus L not by L not here. How much is this? L final is nothing but two L minus L by L is equal to one. True strain is nothing but L n one plus epsilon is equal to L n two. Point six nine three. Point six nine three. From here, what is the comparison? Tell me. Epsilon is greater than epsilon t. Epsilon is greater than epsilon t. Now, sigma t equals to sigma into one plus epsilon. Here, epsilon is equal to one. Here, sigma into 1 plus 1 is nothing but sigma t is equal to 2 sigma from here you can write sigma t will be greater than sigma here tell me epsilon is equal to l final minus l original by l original It is nothing but L by two minus L by L origin is L. Here it is minus point five. Epsilon t equals to L n one plus epsilon is equal to L n one minus point five. Here it is L n one by two equal to minus point six nine three. Don't focus on the minus minus representing compression from here to here. What you observe? Tell me. Epsilon is less than epsilon t. Focus only on the magnitude. True strain is higher than the engineering strain for plastic compressive loading. Now, yeah. Sigma t equals to sigma into one plus epsilon. Here epsilon is equal to minus point five. So here what you will get? Tell me sigma into one minus point five. This is nothing but sigma by two. 
टू सिग्मा टी इक्वल टू सिग्मा इन दिस केस सिग्मा टी विल बी लेस देन सिग्मा आर एल्स यू कैन राइट या सिग्मा टी लेस देन सिग्मा और सिग्मा ग्रेटर देन सिग्मा टी एप्सिलॉन ग्रेटर देन एप्सिलॉन टी सिग्मा टी ग्रेटर देन सिग्मा एप्सिलॉन लेस देन एप्सिलॉन टी सिग्मा टी लेस देन सिग्मा ओके ना हियर वी ऑलरेडी ऑब्जर्व दैट एक्चुअली सी हियर दिस इज स्ट्रेस दिस इज स्ट्रेन अंडर यूनिएक्सियल टेंसर लोडिंग हियर यू विल गेट अप टू हियर ओके ना हियर सिग्मा टी एट दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट this particular thing is sigma e sigma at this part the sigma here sigma t will be sigma t will be greater than the sigma of course sigma t will be greater than sigma for plastic tensile loading in case of plastic compressive loading sigma t will be less than sigma here epsilon less than epsilon t okay now everything is one bit actually so anything will come in your competitive exams okay the relationship is very very important the relationship between true values and engineering values yes and this particular thing that's it just small game uh, in plastic tensile loading and plastic compressive loading right down up to here now write down stress versus strain diagram for mild steel cast iron and aluminum See that? Stress versus strain diagram. First, focus on. After that, okay. Okay. So this is mild steel. This particular thing is cast iron, aluminium. Yeah, first theta aluminium, theta cast iron, theta mild steel. These are the graphs, all experimentally obtained graphs. Stress versus strain diagram. Okay, you have done tensile test. 
for tensile test for mild steel, cast iron and aluminium. Finally, you got a beautiful graph that is stress versus strain diagrams. Just we are observing all three diagrams. We are theta is nothing but uh, uh, angle made by this uh, inclined line. It is tan theta is nothing but slope of the line. Okay. Now see this from here. What you observe? Tell me. Theta mild steel will be greater than theta cast iron greater than theta aluminium. Now tan theta mild steel greater than tan theta cast iron greater than tan theta aluminium. Here slope of the mild steel greater than slope of the cast iron greater than slope of the aluminium here slope equivalence to slope m equivalence to tan theta equivalence to stress by strain equivalence to n's modulus this is the meaning of the slope slope means uh, this is the slope, right? This is theta, it will give sigma, it will give epsilon. Sigma by epsilon. Sigma by epsilon is equal to Ng's modulus. So here you can write Ng's modulus of the mild steel greater than Ng's modulus of the cast iron greater than Ng's modulus of the aluminium this is the beauty actually again okay. here n smallest value so e mild steel is equal to 210 gigapascal most of the cases 200 gigapascal next e cast iron is nothing but 100 gigapascal e aluminium it is 70 gigapascal these are the values of n smallest of the mild steel, cast iron and aluminium. Now focus on elastic deformation. Elastic deformation. Elastic deformation. This is nothing but delta L is nothing but PL by AE. Elastic deformation is inversely proportional to the n modulus. Okay, for same length and area of cross section and same application of uniaxial tensile load. In that case, elastic deformation is inversely proportional to the n modulus. The relation between N smallest of the mild steel, cast iron and aluminium we got by observing theta. Okay, now we can write elastic deformation of the mild steel will be less than elastic deformation of the cast iron less than elastic deformation of aluminium. Okay, higher the N smallest, lesser will be the elastic deformation. Okay, so once you, uh, once they give, once they mention elastic deformation specifically, we need to follow this particular relation. Now, we know that total deformation equivalents to elastic deformation plus elastoplastic deformation plus plastic deformation okay here we need to write uh, to calculate total deformation we need to consider elastic deformation in elastic region elastoplastic deformation in elastoplastic region and plastic deformation in plastic region but here for cast iron, there is no elastoplastic deformation and much and there is no plastic deformation. Here, it will break in here now, but mild steel is having elastic deformation, elastoplastic deformation and plastic deformation. We can write 
plastic deformation of the mild steel is far far greater than the this particular elastic deformation of the cast iron cast iron okay so even though the elastic deformation of the mild steel is greater than the elastic deformation of the cast iron total deformation of the mild steel will be greater than the elastic uh, total deformation of cast iron so this comparison is very very important okay so here once you see elastic deformation only elastic deformation of mild steel less than elastic deformation of the cast iron but once you talk about total deformation it includes elastic deformation elastoplastic deformation and plastic deformation once you consider all three deformations the plastic deformation of the mild steel will be far far greater than the elastic deformation of the cast iron why right? because these all are brittle materials there is no plastic deformation for these two materials okay so that is why once you talk about total deformation in that case total deformation of the mild steel will be far far greater than the total deformation of the cast iron it is very very important right on up to here is it okay next Anything you missed? No, no. Okay. Next step. Yeah. mild steel cast iron aluminum once you observe uh, apply the load this will be l original l final here talk about elastic deformation of the mild steel elastic deformation delta l elastic deformation delta l cast iron pp so comparatively you will get okay here elastic deformation of the cast iron mild steel cast iron here it will be aluminum this is aluminum cast iron mild steel it is more higher even more higher elastic deformation of aluminum okay here e is equal to tell me e is nothing but stress by strain na load by area of cross section delta l by l okay so this is all about mild steel this is mild steel 
so e cast iron p by a by delta l by l cast iron e aluminium is equal to p by a delta l by l into this particular thing is aluminium once you talk about once you conduct an experiment na load in all the cases same same specimen same area of cross section and same length everything is same here we know that delta l mild steel will be less than delta l cast iron will be less than delta l aluminium here less deformation compared to here here little more deformation here it is more deformation this is the relation finally e mild steel greater than e cast iron greater than e aluminium here you should build one good point here what is that is mild steel is mild steel is more elastic than more elastic than cast iron and aluminium cast iron is more elastic than aluminium okay what is meant by elasticity elasticity it is a property of material ability of the material to regain back to its original position after removal of the load here lesser the deformation it is having more flexibility to regain back to its original position okay na higher the n smallness higher will be the elasticity take na higher the n smallness uh higher the n smallness higher will be the elasticity elasticity higher the n smallness means lesser the deformation okay so lesser the deformation here elastic deformation for this is experimental setup uh, results you applied same load for three cases you observed less deformation in mild steel and relatively little more in cast iron here relatively high in aluminium you have written the relationship in the deformation so okay this is the deformation relation you know that lesser the deformation higher will be the n smallness p a and l everything same n smallness inversely proportional to delta l now e mild steel greater than e cast iron greater than e aluminium finally mild steel is more elastic than cast iron and aluminium cast iron is more elastic than aluminium what is meant by elasticity it is a property of material the ability of the material to regain back to its original position okay na so mild steel can regain back to its original position after after removal of the load more than the cast iron and aluminium okay this is the uh, how to define elasticity okay in case of stretchiness stretchiness of the aluminium is higher than the cast iron and mild steel okay here you can take stretchiness write down up to here stretchiness of the stretchiness of the mild steel less than cast iron less than aluminium aluminium is having maximum stretchiness it can uh, stretch in the uh, the diamond elastic deformation of the aluminium is higher now put heading put heading write down
similarly write down the statement scale is more elastic than rubber why steel is more elastic than rubber we need to discuss here first focus on the steel and the rubber you took same specimen same specimen load acting on the specimen is p the load acting on the specimen is p tensile load in both the cases here rubber okay same length you need to keep okay same magnitude of uh, same specimen area also same this is length l area also same in both the cases what you will observe tell me so the deformation will be like this deformation will be very less here it is this is l final this will be l original delta l steel l final minus l not here it will be very high you will experience the same once you conduct an experiment l final for the rubber okay so here yeah, delta l for rubber here it is l phi dash minus l okay so once you observe in these two cases what is the thing tell me delta l steel will be less than the delta s l rubber rubber okay now e steel equal to p by a here it is stress by strain can i say p by a by delta l steel by l l is same here you can write e mild steel here it is e rubber sigma by epsilon p by a delta l rubber by l okay once you observe here same load is acting in both the cases same specimen area of cross section is same that means p by a is same in both the cases next length of the specimen is same we because same specimen length is same only difference here is delta l steel and delta l rubber n smallest is inversely proportional to delta l from here what is the relation between e steel and e rubber tell me e 
रबर ठीक है ई स्टील एंड ई रबर फॉर एग्जाम्पल क्या ई स्टील माइल्ड स्टील ओके ना यू विल गेट टू टेन गीगा पासकल ई फॉसिलिकॉन रबर मोस्ट ऑफ द रबर्स ना यू विल गेट टू टू थ्री अराउंड टू पॉइंट फोर गीगा पासकल ठीक है टू पॉइंट वन गीगा पासकल यू कैन टेक मे बी टू पॉइंट वन और टू पॉइंट थ्री almost n smaller of the steel is 100 times higher than the rubber okay n smaller of the steel is 100 times higher than the rubber higher the n smaller higher will be the elasticity okay so like that we can build the relation Rubber can't bring it back to its original position. Okay, now the ability of the material to regain back to its original position is nothing but elasticity. In that case, the chance of regain back to its original position in case of steel is high compared to the rubber. That is why steel is more elastic than rubber. Okay, n smallest of the steel is hundred times higher than the n smallest of the rubber. Higher the n smallest, higher will be the elastic nature, elasticity. Okay, now so it is very simple uh, explanation. So you took same specimens, but it is made up of steel. It is made up of steel. Okay, it is made up of rubber. Okay, same length, but deformation in the rubber is higher. Deformation in the rubber is higher than the deformation in the steel. So just you substituted here. Finally, you got n smallest of the steel is higher than the n smallest of the rubber. Finally, you concluded that. Steel is more elastic than rubber. Now, write down up to here. Steel is more elastic than Now, friend, down. Stress versus strain diagram for different materials. First. Stress versus strain diagram. This is perfect rigid material. Okay, this is perfect rigid 
body rigid body here for this negligible deformation negligible deformation negligible deformation so strain equal to zero for infinite amount of load next here sigma versus epsilon this is perfect elastic body perfect elastic material okay next here it is from here to here it is rigid and plastic okay from here to here it is rigid and then plastic rigid and plastic material sigma epsilon this from here to here elastic elasto plastic or elastic and plastic material from here to here elastic and plastic material from here to here elastic and then this is strain hardening hardening here elastic and hardening plastic okay elastic and hardening plastic then here it is unloading unloading it is hardening hardening elastic here elastic hardening plastic with unloading Okay, so this is all about stress versus strain diagram for different materials. Okay, yeah. here it is elastic and plastic. This particular thing is rigid. It is elastic, perfect elastic. This is a rigid. perfect plastic okay elastic okay this is all about stress versus strain diagram for different materials write down up to here you will get this kind of diagrams in uh, public uh, service commission exams uh, like awea some local exams state board okay na so the graph uh, some matching type questions will come in uh, engineering service examination for gate uh, maybe you will get it but you should know 
what are the stress versus strain diagram for different materials like perfect rigid body perfect elastic rigid and plastic similarly elastoplastic material elastic and hardening plastic elastic uh, hardening plastic with unloading okay this is all about stress versus strain diagram for different materials okay so what are the things we discussed till now see here So we started with stress versus strain diagram for mild steel and sigma t versus epsilon t diagram for mild steel. Okay, sigma t. epsilon t and sigma epsilon relations relations and sigma versus epsilon diagram for mild steel cast iron and aluminum finally why steel is more elastic than rubber then sigma versus epsilon diagram for different materials so first we have done this thing okay in a wonderful way after that this 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 our object of the lecture is fulfilled so this is the object we have done everything in a optimum way this is the boundary of the syllabus okay everything will come in the boundary if question came from stress versus strain diagram it will be from the notes only okay so we need to solve some practice questions at the end of simple stresses and strain chapter okay so this is all about second lecture synthetic material 2 and stress was a strain diagram next class we need to discuss about axial loading how to draw axial loading diagram sir for uh, uniform bar or non uniform bar okay subject and a different loading condition we need to focus only on axial loading in this particular chapter and we need to draw axial loading diagrams then you can calculate corresponding axial stresses in the member or portion and axial deformation at a point with respect to fixed end that is is the object of axial loading diagram so that part you can discuss in the next class thank you any queries